Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Alone in the Dark. But before we continue, I do need to make a tiny little announcement. Earlier today, someone, naming no names, it wasn't me and we know who it was, managed to accidentally slice through the telephone line as it comes into the house meaning that we completely lost telephone and internet access. That same person managed to effect a temporary repair on the phone line, and after about three quarters of an hour, it was working again. However, this is a temporary repair. We don't know how long it's going to last, and of course, this was on a Sunday. So we will be calling out some professional to come look at it and hopefully fix it pretty soon. But there's a possibility that I won't have a working internet connection and won't be able to upload videos for a little while. Depending on how long it takes for someone to, yeah. If the thing breaks down before we can get someone to come look at it, yeah, there'll be a bit of a gap. Now. That's not the reason I haven't been able to upload very many videos recently. That is completely separate. In the last episode, Emily explored the sunken temple deep beneath the sands, and she finally got out into the attic with a door that cannot be interacted with again. So that was a one-time, one-use. If what the detective has told us is true, everyone here in Derseto is part of a cult and they're all planning to summon some great and powerful evil here. And Jeremy plans to sacrifice himself to the Dark Man to prevent that evil. What if the Dark Man is that evil? This feels like some kind of dodgy trap. I'm sneaking because we want to be careful. Let's take a moment to look at things. So a lot of things have been removed. We have the Dark Man's Faustian contract, which seems to be um, fairly generic stuff. With notes from the Doctor. And we have been told to break into the Doctor's office to find out what he knows. We have the Sacrificial Dagger, which appears to be modelled on the Caduceus, the healing staff of Hermes symbol of the medical profession rather than a wave-bladed chris a sacrificial knife we have the talisman still we have the commonplace book jeremy's warning from the beginning of the game and the engagement ring from john marcus when i get back 19 right this is this is dodgy right because that's when the First World War ended. Promising to come back when the war... Ah, oh, but it ended the 11th hour of the 11th hour. On the 11th day of the 11th... Yeah, the 11th minute of the 11th hour. Of the 11th day of the 11th month of that year. So he must have gone off to fight right before the war ended. Like in the last of the four years. And then perish. We've had this since the very beginning. And it has not been taken away. It seems important somehow. We got a sacrificial dagger. If we get to a situation where we have to sacrifice the dead John Marcus or Jeremy, like save one, sacrifice the other, that's the kind of thing, because we've been told there are multiple endings to this game, multiple endings for each character, and so far we haven't had the opportunity to make a single choice that would influence a path towards one ending or another, and it feels like it might be a right at the end snap decision type thing. Now, oh, I wanted to check the map. Back upstairs. The attic has not been completed, even though we were, we went in there for a cutscene, we've emerged. We may get to go up there. Ah, there's a lift shaft here. Wait just a minute. That does not connect to a lower space below. 
So it's not a lift shaft. It is like a wine rack. Which we can open up to reveal an area behind. This seems like a place we will need to return to then. And I shouldn't have closed the map. We also want to get into Dr. Gray's apartment. Um, locks. We don't have everything. It feels like we are being funneled. Okay, this is now fully barricaded. So either they are trying to keep the detective out, or they know that I will be coming from up here. Also, the Dark Man made no great effort to prevent me from retrieving the contract from his temple. And the entire temple was set up to channel me towards acquiring it. This was locked previously, and still is. We have no key. I need the key. And this must therefore be the only path we are allowed to take. Oh, this can't be good. If we can just get rid of Jeremy, everything will go back to normal. That reminds me. I saw Miss Emily earlier. You remember her? You know she's Jeremy's niece. She's looking for me. That's right. She's helping us. In her own way. In her own way. As long as she don't stand in the way of the mother of a thousand yards. <laughs> I don't think she knows or cares about that. She just helped the gym. It's true. I'm more worried about that detective right. Carmen fella. He's been snooping around asking all kinds of questions. God, it hurts. What has she got inside? I wish her? you would stop doing that. Gives me the heebie jeebies. All right, so Emily, you're in for a hard time. Also, you're not sneaking anymore. Sneak. We wish to avoid these people. Now. Hmm. That is blocked. We can go through the servants' quarters here. This is still locked. We still don't have the missing country of France. Um, there's a lot of things we don't have here, actually. It's risky to try and go here and get these, but I think we have to try. I think we need to sneak around the edge of the chambers, past these ominously shrouded things draped in cloth. Um, dear map. Well, that is an interesting development, is it not? So not all the barri barricaded doors are shown on the map. This is a very linear path we walk then. I strongly suspect that the doorway to the right will be also yeah we got a block we got a block so that's bolted from the other side we're definitely restricted off from these areas that are not yet fully explored which hopefully means we're not as near to the end of the game as it might seem Otherwise, it means there's areas that we just never get to experience or interact with. Unless that's for a Kanbi playthrough. Which would be interesting. Now. So. So, wait. What is going on? Oh, that's not. So, okay, we can, I think this is locks, and we're wanting to get back upstairs to the doctor's room, find a way in, but that is blocked, so how do we get through a blocked door 
two blocked doors. Oh. This is going to be very... Whoa. We don't want to get caught in that light. I have a plan. It's not a very good plan. The plan is that we sneak upstairs. We have another locked door. We have no keys. And we head for the doctor's office, which will be locked or blocked in some way. Two. I think Dr. Gray is in there. Maybe I can go snoop around his office then. Yeah, how? Do not disturb sign. Part of a lagni app related to the Prisoner of Ice, which unlocks more forbidden knowledge. Um, I mean, the pace of the storyline implies that we're nearing the... Yeah, we're entering into the final act. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop sneaking, and remember that in the Forbidden Temple, I could do this. Okay. Probably shouldn't have done that. But it was worth a quick try. So, we're going to need some kind of key. We could go back down to the library in a small parlour. We can't go into the drawing room anymore. Toilet and Lottie's room are just locked things we can't unlock. Um, we're missing a puzzle piece in the clerk's office. Maybe we should go and look at that. We can't go out onto here either. But if we go downstairs through the conservatory where there's now something to do down there. Oh, this is oddly locked. Oh no, that's down into that area. Right, okay. Um, we can come back out here, up the ladder, and across here, right? I think this is our choice then. Also, I'm gonna... It's blocked. <coughs> sneeze, which doesn't exactly bode well for our stealth prospects at the moment. Which count ourselves lucky we're not playing Alien Isolation. And what, pray, could this be? Lunacy and the Astarte Artist Colony. Lunacy and the Astarte Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Castle. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Panchartrin. Yeah, Accounts we... of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. There we go. His same fellow name, colonist Heinrich Castle did know. 
because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols mm. of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. So we've got a connection between Astarte and Shub Nigarath, the mother of a thousand young, the black goat of the woods, and a whole load of other names, right? Interesting. So we have, oh, uh, what's it, the, the king in yellow, the black pharaoh, whatever his name is, yeah, the king in yellow, and Shub Nigarath involved in this story now. That's two Lovecraftian Elder Gods. That is way more than most investigators would ever have to deal with. Even the name Darseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. Hmm. In the case of naming the plantation, Darseto was certainly not an accident. We know that Elia Pickford intended to build a temple for his oh. cult for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns, when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned mm. down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorsetto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorsetto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Hmm. Shub Nigorath is, on the other hand, very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Udnauspreschlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. Mm. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darseto's grounds. When Captain mm. J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at their seto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. Yeah. So, it seems the cult keeps reappearing here. It rises and bubbles and falls and then goes silent for a while. Either some cultists are sacrificed to give the impression the entire cult has been, you know, sacrificed to the authorities to give the impression the entire cult has been overwhelmed and driven out and destroyed, or the entire local branch of the cult is destroyed, but the place is so corrupt and evil it draws existing cult members or new cult members who come and become involved in the same madness over and over and over again. This could also explain why members of Emily and Jeremy's family keep being drawn back here as a sort of generational thing. That vase looks... The light on this side of it makes it look so much like it's something that should be interacted with. Now, have I fully explored this room? Yes. Okay, then. 
that book wasn't there before. Which means I want to go and check these. That was a door opening. It wasn't me. I would be impressed if the game actually tracked the servants, the cultists, searching the building. Okay, yep, something different. Preparations for St. John's. Um, that's... Wait, is that... Is that Michaelmas or St. John's where you have the big bonfire? We must have summer? faith that Jeremy's pact with the Dark Man is a bluff. Oh. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is our goat without horns. She knows it and will play mm. the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. So, Thompson. So Grace is the little girl who didn't exist in the first game but was a character in the second game. So does that mean she's going to be sacrificed in a ritual or does it mean she will perform the sacrifice? Either way... I feel a more thorough investigation is in order. As the contents of chambers are changing. The rats are hiding under the toilet again. It's not that. It's not... Ah. What prey is this? Some broken spectacles. Part of a Lagni app. Death of the author. The ribbon. Broken spectacles. Probably some kind of... That looks like a folder. Or like an open spined book, like stitched together or something. Interesting. And it does seem like the authoress in here. That's been, there's something dodgy going on with that toilet roll. The, the toilet roll holder seems to be visible through it from certain angles. Yeah. Or at certain distances. If I tried to go downstairs, this was supposedly blocked, was it not? Locked now. Okay. So I'm going to rather generously and hopefully not foolishly assume that, right, so that is blocked from the stairs. Hang on, I've literally, just a minute. Oh, wait a minute, did I miss a floor? It's blocked. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, lady. I just have a sneaking suspicion that we might be able to get back into the attic after all. Pretty sure we can't. But I now want to go and check. It gives me time to think. Also, going back up there is heading away from the objective and the complete opposite to what the cult expects of me. So, this isn't going to go... How did I get in here? If both those doors on that landing are blocked. And this one too. Can't even be interacted with. I came in here. Through this one. Which is now a point of no return. It's literally not blocked there. So why, pray, dear game, 
You don't want to let me go back there now, do you? Interesting. Well, onwards we must go then. Following the only available path. And probably getting another autosave again as we enter this, as we pass through that door. Okay, better get both feet on the floor. We may be in trouble soon. This chamber is no longer safe and unexplored, and aha! Uh -huh, what could this be? But another clue. An opera playbill. Dido and Aeneas. So the pirates of Pontchartrain put on an opera, probably with really terribly researched costumes and very 1920s um, fashion. Actually, wait, no, maybe uh, pre-1920s, because they, they disappeared like very, very early in the Great War, before America was even involved in it. But I strongly suspect that this room has now been cleared. Indeed. Okay. And we apparently don't know we're following the cult's aims. By bringing the contract here, where they can reach it and take it away from us, we have potentially doomed Jeremy. However, um, also I saw a comment on the forum somewhere. People were talking about bugs and stuff. It looks haunting in this light. Apparently, this tree is the final boss at the end of the game. If it is then, you know, somebody posted a thoughtless spoiler. And if it's not, then hey, that's great. Okay, so this door... Hang on. This should be blocked according to the map. Oh! Keep our secrets. Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Rosetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work, and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty, and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Dersetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Gray. So there have been two deaths among the inmates. And... Only one while I was here, one, you know, possibly before. I think we saw one of the bodies, but my feeling is these were not suicides. Okay. We don't get to interact here. And this chamber is allegedly fully explored. He says going back to the map just to make certain. So we can get out into the kitchen. We don't have a lot of options here. So we can't go down there. We can get out into the kitchen garden. We may be able to climb the ladder, but if we do... Ah, so yeah, we're heading back this way. Literally just back this way. Okay. We have to hope the ladder is in the same condition that we left it. And that there's no violent dogs or anything out here in the garden. At least no monsters have assailed us yet. Here in the manor. Um, I am feeling cautious, right? But my gut feeling is we're just going back up there.
Let us tread carefully. There should be the two eyes in the barrel once again. The eyes in the barrel have gone. It's a lot of rain. And yet we appear to still be dry. I'll put it down to budgetary considerations. I, I will, I'm aware that those boards looked rotten before. And we do have the rot spreading through the entire manor, so actually... Okay, if anything's gonna... There's a bear. I must remember the bear. It's there. I'm heading that way. Okay. Actually, I may be able to go up the stairs as well and get into... Ah! Those two chambers. Alright. I need the country of France. Still. So I can get into these areas this way. I don't think I can get through here. Nope, it's all locked and keyed. And the keys do not exist, essentially. Another autosave. There's something going on here. I'm either avoiding hazards, or the game is wanting to save as I approach various moments. Now, Should not have done that. Is there some way, right, that I can ring the bell, go hide in the receptionist's room, have someone come out here? Let's pick up this while we're at it. The Flying Dutchman. Uh, wasn't that a haunted ship? Oh, hey, look, we got stuff. Another lagging app completed. Yeah, show me a bonus. What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. But you are so infuriated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? Do what you think. What do you think, Dr. Gray? What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster, if only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? So that's interesting. That sounds like the voice of the Spaniard, who is a manifestation of part of um, Jeremy's personality or persona. But it implies that he is here, able to enter into this reality as a separate entity. Because this asylum is so clearly linked to the domains of madness. Let's continue. I'm expecting... Yes, good. I am wanting to check I'm being thorough here, because I've got a feeling this is an area of no return. The 
the bell feels integral, but we don't seem to be able Mr. to mess Waits with it. Mr. Waits must have had a spare key to Dr. Gray's office, but where? Indeed. Where indeed? Not through there. Probably concealed behind the puzzle that we have previously ex found in here, but been unable to interact with. Um, okay, so that board was designed by Philistines, who forget that Sunday is the first day of the week. Was it a safe, and might it be the same combination as before? I don't... It's a safe. I don't know the combination. Wait, maybe I do. Yes, maybe you do. Perhaps it's... Four, five, four. No. That would perhaps be too easy, would it not? Wait a minute. Four. Five. Four. No, so that's not it. But let's look at these. Nine one three. Um, no overt numbers here. So let's look a little longer, because 454 was the previous one, and it was left, right, left. What if we're in some kind of reverse? Would that be 545? Because what was it? It was, um, what is left, later is right, and hell is right back. Oh, wait. Hell is right back or straight back? So. Four. Five. And then we... No. Damn it. Four, five, and then we go this way around to get to the four. No. It's literally the same safe, same design. So let's try a mirror, actually, right? Let's go. Four. Five. Four. No. Okay. Oh, game, what are you doing to mess with me? Perhaps I have to go upstairs first to find the combination and bring it back down. I strongly suspect that is not the case.
Is that supposed to be a Hound of Tin Dalos? I wonder how many monsters these are supposed to be. Right, I don't remember that. Oh. Hey, little lady, how's your evening been going? Ups and downs, I suppose. I hear that. We all live in the life oh, of an no. elevator operator. Are you alright, sweetie? Do you want to see my mask, miss? I'm making it for St. John's. Uh, how did you... Is that supposed to be my... Ow! You should learn your place, little girl. Why are you acting this way? <laughs> what did I ever do to you? Grace! Grace! She's certainly a little monster. Right. If I find... that the doorway back to the hallway is inaccessible. I'm reloading my last save. Okay. Full. In other words, we already have it. Yeah. That's a kill. At least he's breathing. I'll just... Okay, I'll take that. I'll just borrow these. The country of France is still missing. There's something missing. A film script, Slaughter Gulch, sounds terrible. Send copy to Mr. Shardo. Well, there we go. What did you expect from them? You created too much. There wasn't any room to breathe. Your reification, reification rendered all possible worlds void. You took everything they could imagine and constrained it into something that you didn't even care about. Or maybe you did. Perhaps you cared the most of all. Maybe you tried to save them from themselves and that is why you had to die. What did you expect from them? You created too much. There wasn't any room to breathe. Your reification rendered all possible worlds void. You took everything they could imagine and constrained it into something that you didn't even care about. Or maybe you did. Perhaps you cared the most of all. Maybe you tried to save them from themselves. And that is why you had to die. So, notes from Jeremy? What is... Cassandra's last page. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room mm. seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. A combination we've already seen, right? Nine one three. We don't yet have a sense of directions. Look, Jeremy's... Uh, Emily's not a detective. She's... Ah, we have these again. Yes. Two, five, seven. Possibly as well. 
So that could be the other number we need. This should be a bathroom, right? With previously nothing of note in it. And in this room we still need to find the country of France. Okay. Let's keep sneaking, just in case he wakes up and tries to grab us by the ankles. Same goes for these, in a way. They are... They do feel like a warning about the pose of some of the monsters we have met. Like the hunched over ones. The normal ones. I am going to be heading back to that safe now. Sounds like something's breathing. Possibly even snorting somewhat. When the little girl growled at the bear at the beginning of the game, I still feel... You know, she may have actually been imbuing it with magic, the same way she poured alcohol in the drunken alcoholic's throat. So then, here we are. Let's try nine. One. Three. It worked. Okay. Same directions as before then. Dr. Gray's office key. We're going to want that and we're going to want to backtrack to use it. Yep. Yeah, we got that. The empty room. We're going to want to know about this. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction. Mm. As some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new world view in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this world view, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Given the gap, this appears to have been written later on. It seems the Doctor has fallen subject to this... ...this curse. Now, is this a key? This is the Doctor's office key, not his room key. And we want to get into his room, right? Um... The mask had reminded Emily of her father. Oh no, office it is. Alright, well I'm gonna save before I do that. Just because we're getting to a good episode length anyway. Oh, really? That's going to work, is it? Nope. Okay. But I wonder if I can come at it... ...from this side rather than the other door, and I didn't save. Okay. Here we are. Dr. Gray's office. Now let's see if we can find some answers. Oh, that's completely blocked. I can't... I can't. I may need to run away very quickly. 
Cassandra's things. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Actually, and the country of France. Excellent. A small key shaped like the country of France. Now. Key. To the doctor's room. Stairwell key. Look, I'll take it. I have a distinct impression. Right, let's let's go for it. Sod it. Jeremy's treatment. Dearest Dr. Manzetti. I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly oh difficult to How get good times? results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. Mm. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, mm. that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. We shall see. In the infirmary. Oh, that's like way downstairs, isn't it? I think I should go back upstairs. and mess with the country of France. Then I should go into these two chambers. Um, the infirmary is way downstairs in the lower portion. Ah, that flight of stairs, got it. Okay, well, I have more to do in here and in the office, that is interesting. Now, these things to do may occur on a later visit. But this is probably one of the best opportunities I'm going to get. To fiddle with it. I think a later visit it is. I shall sidle out into the hall and beware of the bear. Ah! Okay. This can't be. Yes, it can. All right. A 
check the map. No, there's still more. What in the clerk's office? Do I, is it still for Bell? I wonder. Is the boat going to keep coming back to haunt us with ever increasing frequency? Now, at that point in time, so the puzzle is theoretically just where the safe is, right? Yes. On either side of this wall, You'd think it would be the safe that I have opened. But in the interest of my own safety, and the possibility of it being on the other side of this wall, that appears to definitely not be the case. Okay. Now, in that very small instant in the boat shape, in the boat, I was hemmed in by things and unable to move about. I could have tried to walk up across the floor of the chamber for a little, but it would not have availed me much. I will risk it. I'm going to play on. Beware of the bear. Look, if the bear never does anything in the entire game and it's just there for a little girl to growl at to show how playful she is and how she's got a, a childish side so she didn't seem so ominous and scary straight away, that's okay. But the very fact that it has made me constantly aware of the bear, made the bear seem like a threat, is a good thing in a horror game. Will, using the France key, cause the drunken man to... He's gone. Well then. Guess what? France is missing. What have we got? Things and stuff. Looks like a map. A map of the Caribbean. Or Caribbean, if you're American, for some reason. And they make films where they mispronounce it every single time and force poor English actors to say Caribbean incorrectly. That's the map for little girl. Whoa! Uh, I've just lost internet connection again. How wonderful. In which case, I'm going to close this now before anything bad happens and save the game. Oh, joy. Right. This may take a few days to fix, then. That's all I need. Okay, well, I hope you've all enjoyed this episode. It might be a while before I'm able to upload it. And I'll look forward to seeing you all in the very next one. I'm going to say goodbye for now, though, and cheerio, everyone. See you all soon.